Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I would like to share my thoughts on The Wedding Group by Elizabeth Taylor. I'm not sure where this comes in the catalogue of books by this author, however, as we know from previous months, I'm going back and forth from the beginning of Elizabeth Taylor's career to the end of her career until I meet myself in the middle. In this book, we have the protagonist of Cressy, who has grown up in a community that her grandfather cultivated. He is a famous artist who set up this community that is filled that he is filled with his family. All of his daughters, he has chosen their husbands. Although this is set in what was the modern day at the time, he is a very domineering patriarch who keeps them in this very strict religious faith. And in our first chapter, we see Cressy decide to go against the grain and tell her parents that she doesn't have a religion. We know that she's been kicked out of school for being too rebellious. Unfortunately, throughout the 190 pages of hearing that Cressy is this rebellious character, we never actually get to see her as a rebellious character. We never get to see her going against the norm. We just see a young woman who is decidedly lonely who knows that she has to get out of a bad situation and so she ends up living above a antique shop in the beginning before catching the attention of this man and his mother and they enter into a very ill-fated relationship because she is much younger than this man. And I have to say that for me, out of all the Elizabeth Taylor books that I have read, this is the one that felt like the least fully recognised story. We've been told that Cressy was rebellious, but we weren't shown that. We were told that the man that she was in love with was feeling the effects of his father having left the family at a young age, but his father was a much older man when he married his mother and recognised the two worlds didn't align, and then one day he just absconded, and his mother has never forgiven his father for that but he also doesn't want to repeat those mistakes. But that's something that you're constantly told, and it felt like we were reliving the same scene over and over again until we came to the conclusion. It's a shame because it feels like towards the end of Taylor's career as a writer, she's almost petering out. I don't know, like I say, I don't know where the books come in the sequence of her. You see, this is apparently not the penultimate book she wrote. According to this, Mrs. Palfrey at the Claremont, which was the first book that set me off on this journey, was a penultimate novel. So I don't understand what it is about the wedding group that is why I find that it is written so poorly. Cressy is presented as this character who doesn't really know much of the world, which can be fine, and she's introducing this middle-class man to pleasures that he didn't know about because he believed that he'd outgrown them. So she's a rather modern individual and perhaps should have sought out a lover who was around her age, who would be able to show her the world that she wanted. Instead, she has this man who is looking for a wife who reminds him of his mother and he hasn't found that. It's honestly just irksome. Like, I can't tell whether I'm getting annoyed at the characters or whether I'm getting annoyed at the author's lack of characterization in this story. Sometimes I think that she's captured characters perfectly well and we'll have great dialogue that's discussing something that was going on in the world at the time, or she uses dialogue to create a character, but oftentimes these are just extras and oftentimes they are the common folk, uh, the people who are working as servants or the people who just come in every now and then, the gossips in the village. And I would have liked to have seen more of that. I think I feel like the author had a lot of ideas, but she often wrote slim volumes, and because of that we don't really get to see much. It, like I say, it's a very repetitive novel. The author could have benefited from showing us some of the world that Cressy had previously inhabited. I did not like Harry Breton, the, this patriarch over that family, and that did make me reticent to read this book in the beginning, but his shadow over the characters and the proceedings is so quick that it didn't leave a lasting sensation of what she was actually running away from. I know from what it says that she was running away from the constraints that were put upon her by her family, but I would have enjoyed to have been shown more of that, how she grappled with love for her parents, but the need to get away from them. There was just, for me, there was just a lot missing from this Elizabeth Taylor. It just felt incredibly nonsensical and like 
nothing that occurred in this novel could actually happen. And I'm pretty fed up of the tales of this time where men go off and have affairs and it's perfectly okay and the wife is just expected to accept that regardless of her age because eventually the man will come back around and realise his mistakes. And I'm like, sod that. Sod that. The love interest's mother has spent all of the years that her husband's disappeared from her just lying in bed waiting for him to return. Like, really? Really? We're super, like, I know it was a different time, but I, for me, just looking at the way that women were presented and characters were presented in this novel, I was not happy. A nonsensical, repetitive novel with poorly drawn characters is my final word on The Wedding Group by Elizabeth Taylor. Anyway, that is The Wedding Group by Elizabeth Taylor. If you've read this book and would like to discuss it, then please feel free to do so in the comments. I hope that you got something out of this video, because until next time, that is all.